Hey, I wanted to give a little bit more insight about my Thailand trip with some stories, reviews, and some tips. I might write a black in Thailand guide or ebook after my third trip. So once you see those videos pop up, look in the description box in this video and the other one in order to get more information. Now, first thing I want to say is that there are a lot of hazards in Thailand. Yeah. When I say hazards, I mean like, you know how in America people take precautions in certain places to ensure that no one get injured because they don't want to get sued. Thailand is not really like that. I remember getting on the public bus and they have fans mounted on the ceilings. And I was thinking if that aluminum bar that protects the fan were to fall off, my head would basically get hit by the fan blade and kill me or even knock me out. Speaking of getting knocked out, one day I was in a hostel and I was debating whether I should go out and get me something to eat or not. So something told me to go out. I walk through a clothing market that was extremely crowded to the food area. Now, keep in mind that when you in downtown um, Bangkok, I'll post the name of the neighborhood in the description box. You got a lot of people walking around, a lot of cars, everything is congested. So, everyone is very close to you. That being said, I'm, I remember walking behind some um, Americans and I was heading to the food stand. All of a sudden... Something hits me in the head. Dang! I'm like, wow. So apparently a large bar that was holding a shirt that a vendor was selling just fell over. No one prompted it or anything like that. It was just a coincidence. And it hit me right in the head. And I was thinking if that bar was any heavier, I would have gotten knocked out. There's no telling what would have happened after that. So that's the thing about um, Thailand. There are many, many hazards. I was talking about being on a bus. And people rarely talk about the height. See, in Thailand, a lot of Thais are skinny. They're also short. So I'm 5'8". About 230, 250, something like that. <laughs> and I was considered a giant out there. I was desperately trying to lose weight so I could fit in more with the ties. So if you're taller and you're bigger, you're going to look like a giant, just a big old American. So when it comes to entering buildings, getting on public buses, or just going around a city in general, you're going to be doing a lot of bending down in order to get it inside some of these doorways that's just what it's going to be you are a big old american there as you all know i'm a fan of a locked up abroad series and i'm gonna do several more reviews especially when it comes to the thailand episodes and i just want to say that if you are not looking for the criminal element in thailand for the most part you will not run into it one of the reasons I can't watch a specific Locked Up Abroad episode no more is because the moment the guy said he frequent the red light district, I just turned it off. Because if you don't go in a red light district, you most likely won't run into any nefarious activities or grimy people. You attract what you are depending on where you hang out. So keep that in mind. With that in spirit... I was in Chiang Mai at the hotel. You can see it in my black and I mean not black, but um ghetto dude in Thailand video. Now, normally when Americans are woke at 3 a.m., the Thai is asleep because when it's 3 a.m. there, it's 3 p.m. in America. And we're still on American time as far as our sleep patterns. So around 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning. You will see Americans walking around. Now, the hotel I stayed, they had a desktop at the very bottom uh, floor. Well, the ground floor. 
and anyone can use it. So I was using it because I had an extremely slow laptop at the time. And there was no one down there except for a guy who was sitting in front of the hotel keeping posts. I guess he was some type of security guard. He didn't have any badges or a gun. Just sitting there every night. There was an, um, I'm, I'm going to say overweight white girl because that's what she, what she was. And an East Indian female, she was kind of, um, she was real healthy herself. They checked in that day. Later the night, they was um, in the lobby getting some water. They have a water container and you can stick your cup down there and get some. East Indian female looked at me. And the overweight white girl walked past the corridor and was like, hi, waving her hand. And I nodded my head, acknowledging her. And she said, bye, waving her hand again. I thought that was pretty weird. So several minutes later, I could hear them talking with some guys. The guys didn't check in with them, I don't think. All of a sudden, I hear them whispering, and I could hear them telling something to get away, get away. Now, in that hotel, they have cats walking around, just walking around all times of night, chilling. Very nice cats, too. Um, So, I'm assuming they was telling the cats to get away. All of a sudden, they get quiet for about a minute or so. After that, I could hear a bunch of <laughs> all in conjunction to each other. All of a sudden, it stopped. And I could hear silence. Then they go back speaking normally. And then they go in their room. I'm like, what the heck was that? You know what I'm assuming, that they was basically sniffing some stuff. Okay. In Thailand, people are not just going to randomly walk up to you offering narcotics or drugs because they implement the death penalty for anyone caught with any drugs. So you don't want to get involved with that at all. And you need to be within that circle in order to find it. Actively looking for it and knowing people within that industry in order to find it. You know what's funny? The hostel I was staying at in Bangkok had an upstairs back balcony. And I was thinking about going up there, but I decided not to. And I'm glad I didn't. Because some Americans and I think some English um, people went up there. You could hear them loud kind of partying and whatever. Then all of a sudden, there's a weed smell fusing throughout the hostel to the point where I'm coughing. So I already knew that they was up there smoking marijuana. And I was thinking, y'all about to have the cops in here. They're about to arrest people. I'm thinking within my, <laughs> behind the curtains of my, um, of my bed. And I think the staff on the ground floor went up there to try to see who was smoking, what was going on. But you never, and you rarely see people um, smoking out there or doing drugs out there because the drug part is illegal. Keep that in mind. When I went to Bangkok, I did not visit the red light district. I just wanted to visit it one time just to see what all the commotion was about, but never got a chance. Now, with Bangkok, um, I would say that when you hear about lady boys, that's in the red light district. When you hear about women throwing themselves all on you because you are rich Westerners, rich by their terms, that's in the red light district because down in Pattaya, which is like a beach town south of um, Bangkok, and in Bangkok itself, you have girls from the poor region of Udon Thani. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is located in the north, right next to the Laos border. Very poor up there. So a lot of the beautiful girls will travel 
to Bangkok and Pattaya and start working as go-go dancers in some of those bars located in the red light districts. So you see these girls looking real beautiful and just dancing friendly, trying to get you to, you know, give up your money. Then she's probably a hustler herself. And I personally wouldn't want to get involved with that adult lifestyle. That's just me. Some dudes specifically go down there for it. But keep in mind that it's all a stereotype. Especially when it comes to the ladyboy part. We tell anybody who's been to Thailand, the first thing out of their mouths is ladyboys, ladyboys. Well, I didn't see any ladyboys when I was out there. Yeah, I didn't see maybe like an elderly ladyboy. You could clearly tell that it was a dude dressing up as a female unless like all of the lady boys out there look like women i didn't see none with with my eyes so i don't know what that was about but people got this stereotype where it's lady boys and they also bring up the child exploitation situation and i just want to say that that's it's sad it's sickening beyond belief you walking down the street, no one is offering their child to you. Just like no one is offering narcotics to you. You got to be in that circle in order to find that type of stuff. Now, it might be going on in some of these poor areas where people don't have anything to eat. So when people say that type of stuff, tell them that it's a stereotype because Thailand is so much more beautiful. It has so much more to offer than this disgusting things that they bring up. Now, another thing about Thailand I want to talk about is the traffic. The traffic is horrible beyond belief. You will see motorcycles zipping past in and out of traffic, just going in and out of traffic like it's normal. The police don't pull them over or anything. Also, you will have these moto taxis where people are mounted on the back and you will see schoolgirls turn to the side with no helmet, no type of seat belt support system to keep them on a motorcycle. They just along for the ride. And any split second move, they'll fall off. It's a pretty amazing sight to see. And surprisingly, one thing that I didn't see in Thailand was people bonking their horns like bomb, bomb. At least in Bangkok, I didn't see that. And keep in mind, in that city, you have traffic jams. Stretching for miles. You think L.A., Los Angeles, California traffic jams are bad? It has nothing on Bangkok, Thailand traffic. That's for sure. Bangkok, Thailand um, traffic is on a whole different level. I'm talking about when I was taking a bus from Chiang Mai back to Bangkok. Man, once we got in the city, do you know how long it took to get to the bus station? Almost a half a day. It seemed like. And the crosswalk lights out there blink for like 30 something, 30 something seconds. No, 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 no. A hundred seconds. Over a hundred seconds. They uh, blink. So it'd be like hundred. Hundred now before the light turns green. So traffic is real crazy out there. I mean, Thailand has one of the highest um, traffic death rates in the world. So, yeah, people people die from traffic accidents. But it's weird because when you walk down the street, everybody got to respect when it comes to the traffic. If the motorcycle goes right, you go left trying to avoid it. You know, it's like a, everybody got an understanding of where every position is at on the street. You're there. The taxi is there. We're just going to get around. We're going to go over there. We're going to go to the left. You know, it's it's weird. It's kind of like calculated. But regardless of that, you have a high amount of traffic accidents, man. So you, you will most likely get hit by a car out there if you are not looking. When that light is blinking and getting ready to change, just wait. Don't cross. Look both ways on each side of the streets because you might be looking left and a moto taxi it's coming right. They drive crazy out there. You need to be extra cautious when crossing the street, especially if you have um, kids with you. 
Another thing I want to talk about are the cockroaches. There's a lot of cockroaches in Thailand. When you downtown Bangkok, you will see like dead roaches in the um, dead cockroaches in the streets where people have um, you know stepped on them sometimes by accident. So if you do not like insects, you will not like Thailand. Speaking of insects, um, you know. There's two type of trains in Thailand. You have the luxury train, which is the one in my ghetto in Thailand video in the description box below. It's very high class, clean. It's the newer trains. I think it, they were shipped from China, if I'm not mistaken. Then you have the lower class trains. Now the, the high class train that leaves at night. From both cities, from both Bangkok and Chiang Mai. They leave at night. You leave at any time other than the evening on that high class train, you're going to be on the second class train. Second class train is like the brown and purple trains. And these trains have bugs on them. Okay? They have roaches on them. And if you get in the second class, on the second class train, because the second class train is broken up into two parts. They got the third class train, second class, and the first class. The first class, you got the air conditioning. They let down the seats for you and turn it into the bed. You get cover and you have a place to put your um, luggage. In the second class area of the second class train, um, you're seated. So you never know who you're sitting next to. Hopefully the train is not going to be crowded. And you, you know, you're just sitting in the seat for the whole 14 hours. How long ever it takes to get from Bangkok to Chiang Mai and vice versa. Now once now in the third class um section, it's not even a seat. It's basically a bench. And from what I understand, it's facing each other. The benches are the benches on the left side of the car. It's facing the benches on the right side of the car. You're just sitting there for the whole time. During Now, when I went to Bangkok before, and this is during the second trip, the reason I don't have a lot of footage from the second trip is because the train attendant told me to get on a top bunk. So I get on the top bunk, just like he told me. Some Brazilian females, I knew they were Brazilian based on the way they would look. Well, they looked and for the fact that I can understand Brazilian Portuguese to a certain degree and they were speaking in Brazilian Portuguese to the beam to the bomb I'm like okay these females are Brazilian they came and when she looked up at me you can see you know <laughs> she didn't expect to see a black dude first and foremost but you know, she spoke in English like, hey, that's my bunk. And I asked the guy who told me to get up there. And he was like, no, she's right. My bad. My mistake. It's the bottom bunk. So while I'm taking my stuff off the railing for the top bunk, my tablet fall and hit the floor and it cracked. Can't use it anymore. It's broke. Of course, I can't get no repair service in Bangkok looking all over for it. So it was rendered useless. I went to the bathroom portion. That's where the um, train guy was. And I told him like, hey, you know, the tablet broke. And he said, you know, he's not responsible. And you know what I did? I took that tablet and I threw it out. And it's somewhere in the jungles of Thailand as a housing unit for some insect. <laughs> but I have one small video of me hot and sweaty on that train saved on another hard drive. I don't know how to get it off. I'll figure it out later. But one thing that they won't tell you about those trains is that in second class number one you have to bend down in an open area there's plenty of youtubers who visited thailand talking about this there's an open hole at the bottom of each car 
where you got to squat down and use the bathroom. And it just goes on the rocks supporting the tracks. And I guess a bug eat it <laughs> and a liquid evaporate. And that's how you use the bathroom. Second is that those windows are open all night long. So every bug and they mama is flying into that train car. You got moths on top of moths. Little green bugs you've never seen before. I'm talking about mosquitoes the size of your middle finger that lands on your belly and injects its tentacles into your belly and you got to flick it off. Now, what's interesting is that people was laughing at me on the train. These two construction worker guys were sitting across from me and they was looking at me. Of course, because I'm black, so just as uniqueness was drawing them in, but for the fact that I'm an American, and I think they, I, I believe they were saying something like, hey, you know, this guy is in Thailand, yeah, it's going to be insects, because I was flicking every insect off that was landing on me, and you could clearly tell by the look on my face and the energy I was emitting that I didn't like insects at all. So I'm flicking them off, flicking them off, flicking them off. It was very annoying. I also had my um, shoes on the back of the chair in front of me so the roaches won't crawl on my foot. They wasn't cockroaches, luckily. They were just those little small uh, roaches. Freaking amazing, man. That was hell on earth. That was the worst thing I ever been well, I would say the second worst thing. It was the second worst thing. There's something worse that happened to me before. But, yeah, it was that bad. It was, oh, my God, it was, uh, it was horrible. It, it, it was literally hell. It had me evaluate my life. And it was hot on that train. It was just ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. And when I got to the um, train station, no, 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 no. Never mind, never mind. When I took the bus from um, Chiang Mai, because I went up to Chiang Mai several times during my second trip, but one of the times when I was coming back from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, I got off the bus and I was waiting for a taxi, right? There's an area where you can stand where the taxis pull up. Now, I seen a tuk-tuk driver across the way, so I walked up to him. He was sitting down eating, and I asked him, you know, could he take me somewhere? And he said, no, no, you know, cab, point towards the cab. So I went in that area and everybody else is getting in cabs except for me because I was waiting for Tuk Tuk's to pull up. I thought they was going to pull up. So Tuk Tuk's driver, I guess he looked at me, evaluated me and saw that I was just trying to get somewhere. So he came over there and his Tuk Tuk picked me up and took me to where I was going to go. It was all good, man. In other videos, I talked about the um, Tuk Tuk scam artists and that's the cheapest way to um get through bangkok but the cheapest way which a lot of people don't know is taking the public transportation i'm talking about 20 baht 10 baht 30 baht say public transportation there's a train that you can take from the airport to the city center and connect to other trains such as the bts line and more from that train and it will only cost you 20 baht, 30 baht, maximum 50 baht, depending on how far you're going. You know, you can you can cross the canal. I mean, everywhere these trains go, and they're pretty clean, clean, uh, pretty clean trains. Let me tell you, if you arrive in Bangkok around two in the afternoon, oh man, I'm telling you, that train is gonna be filled to capacity. I've never seen a train fill up like that before, ever. I mean, people are just hugging you in, you know. But if you arrive in Bangkok around 5 o'clock in the morning, you straight. You have more than enough room to stretch and do your thing. Also, on the train platforms, there are, I guess, security, if you want to call them that. They got the little uh, wands with... A light on the end of it and it's not to check to see if you got any weapons or anything it's to basically direct the train traffic when people get off and they get on there's actually arrows on the ground pointing to the doors which you enter and arrows pointing out 
um, where people can exit. So it's very um, contained there. Like, um, yeah, everything is, is exact there in um, Thailand. They also have military cats who come on a train platform too and you look weird, they'll come back up on the balcony like they did to me. They saw me, I'm all wide-eyed, they're all wide-eyed, and they was going down the escalator. They said, forget that, we coming right back up the escalators. But they didn't say anything to me or anything like that. It was just the curiosity. You would get that from time to time out there. Another thing I want to cover is the rain, uh, the rain, uh, the rain, the rain out there is on a whole different level. You better buy you a plane ticket of which you can change it because if you get caught in that rain, you will become wet beyond belief to the point where you're going to have to wash all the stuff that you're wearing. Because ain't no way you're going to dry you. Might as well just wash it and dry it later. That's the way it is. But you know, I was talking about the bus and how to take it because I, I don't want to neglect that point. When you're taking a public bus in Bangkok, what you're going to do is go to a designated bus stop. You'll be you'll see them. It will be a white sign with different numbers on it and people waiting. You look for your bus. When it pulls up, you're going to simply get on the bus. You've got to hurry up. And just get on. The moment it pulls up, get on, find you a seat. There's going to be a bus attendant that come around and collect your money. You're going to give them your money. And they're going to give you a ticket. Make sure to keep that ticket because I witnessed this before. There is a authority figure who might come on a bus and check everyone's ticket to make sure that it's the right ticket and it is stamped. And he make notes or whatever. That happened on one bus. It does happen, but for the most part, you want to keep that ticket. And you have to tell the, the bus attendant person where you are going. If you don't know how to pronounce Thai words, you better write it down before you leave and show them. Once you write it down and show them, then they'll know where you're going and charge you the exact way. The red buses are the cheapest bus. They cost like 10 baht to get anywhere. That's right. 10 baht to get anywhere you're going. The blue buses, they base their rides on how far you are going because they are air conditioned bus so normally there's more room on that bus instead of the red bus which only have fans okay the air conditioned bus is 30 um bot can get up to 50 bot 40 bot i always used to take that red bus <laughs> but if you're tall and you want more of luxury you want those curtains sometimes they play music you might want to get on that blue bus. <laughs> Very important. So, yeah. The bus situation, it was okay. It was okay. It was very cheap. Very affordable. And that's for sure. When you want to get off in my ghetto in Thailand video, I talked about pressing the button to get off. When in fact, no, no, no I talked about pulling the string. You don't pull a string. You got to press a button that's in the center of the... Um, bus on top of the ceiling. You look up, you'll see it. Sometimes it's on the bars that you got to grab for support as well. And do not be surprised if a bus get crowded and the bus attendant is telling you to go to certain areas. If they point, you sit. <laughs> also, I talked about this in another video. The 66 street bus. Well, not 66 street bus, but it's the 66 bus goes straight to the government center where you got to get your visa extension. So if you need to go to that government center for any reason, you can get the extension there. Yes. And you can take the 66 street bus straight there. They got two of them, the express one, and the regular one. When I go to um, Bangkok this third time, like I said, I'm going to be recording a lot of videos. I'm going to bring more than one camera. And I'm also going to write that um that, that um, Black in Bangkok or Black in Thailand book, uh, like a travel guide, just for entertainment. You know, if, and I'm going to post it in the description box in this video. So, yeah. What else is there um, you need to know about Thailand? The energy, the energy in Thailand is very cool and respectful. Let me say this. You know how people get frustrated and mad here in America. 
people are in a rage and impulsive. In Thailand, it's not like that. People are more of thinkers. They, um, they're not so distrustful of people. They're not looking behind their back and they're not in your business and stuff like this because of the, you know, the Buddhist culture. It's all about tranquility and being calm and cool. And you feel that all over the country and whatever. But, um, yes. But when you come back to America, you best not have that tranquil, wide eye energy with you. Especially if you're going to a city like New York, L.A., or Chicago. You're going to have to morph your mind and click back to the frustration, the hard attitude, and the focused mentality. It's very important that you do that. Because in my other video, I talked about how I almost got jumped on a bus. Same day I come back to Thailand because all my street smarts kind of went out the window to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? Normally, I wouldn't be taking the bus in that neighborhood on a Friday night. But I did it, especially in the summer. But I did it. And, you know, it's just a lot of coincidences that happened that could have been avoided. But that's the thing. When you come back from Thailand, you're going to have to get back into your American mindset. It is very important. But, yeah, you know, people out there are uh, respectful, very respectful. And it gets to the point of being almost delusional. And I say that because... I'm not trying to diss the Thai people or anything like that, but in Asian culture, they have this thing about saving face or saving themselves from embarrassment. And that's why people never lose their cool out there. You never hear people hollering at each other, fussing at each other. You never hear like gunshots or anything like that. People are calm and cool because they don't want to lose face. They don't want to be embarrassed. I mean, saving face is more than life itself. Um, in um, Asian countries. So you got to understand that's why a lot of Americans who who do all of those negative things find tranquility in Thailand. And people are relatively helpful too. Even if you don't speak Thai, they'll help you. But it seemed like if you spoke Thai, everything would go smoother, of course, and it, it would look like you respect their culture. And speaking of culture, one thing you need to know, too, is that they adore their king. So you best not fold any money because it's disrespectful. Sometimes when you give folded money to cabbies, they'll unfold it, never step on their money, and never disrespect their king. Now, you will see this, especially in the train station, where some music will start playing out of nowhere and everybody will stand still. And it's sort of like a national anthem to commemorate their king. And they take that serious. I mean, you can be in the middle of whatever, and all of a sudden everybody stop in their tracks and start reciting. It's weird. They won't talk to you or nothing. Normally, it's the Americans moving around. So that's very important. Very, very important um, to know. On the train, when the music started, there were some people that stood up. Now, coincidentally, the um, construction guys I was telling you about on the second class train earlier, who was kind of laughing at me, surprisingly, they didn't stand up. Now, I don't know if it's because I was right there and I didn't stand up, but everybody else stand, stood up except for them. Yeah, they, they stand up for that, um, for, the, for, that, for, that, um, for that national anthem, you know. And, you know, sometimes you see CD characters, but if you don't mess with them, for the most part, don't they won't mess with you. But never cop an attitude with Thai people. Never get an attitude with Thai people because they will save face. and They will go to the depths of trying to prove you wrong. So just don't get aggressive with them at all. And never pick a fight with a Thai. Never, never, ever, ever, ever do that, man. I heard the police will take their side. <laughs> so that's just what it is. So those are some tips, some reviews and things about Thailand. Let me think for a second if there's any more information that you need to know. Any more information that you need to know about the beautiful Thailand. When you fly into like Bangkok or any city, you will have to fill out a card. It's normally on that table. You'll see that table. 
you'll see a bunch of pins and you'll see that table. When I go back to Bangkok this third time, I'm going to record all this. I'm going to record the majority of the stuff that I'm saying in this video. And you got to fill it out saying which plane that you came in on. Um, and you need to um, put down where you're going to be staying. Now, you could put down the name of your hotel, or if you're going to have a cabbie to drop you off at a hotel, you can put that information on there instead. Or if you got a hotel reservation, you know, put the name and the phone number of the hotel. So try to have that information on you when you go um, to Thailand. But yeah, and keep in mind that you're going to run into everybody from all walks of life there. Everybody go to Thailand and not every Asian person you see is Thai. You got a lot of Chinese that go there. There's a lot of Chinese. You see somebody who's loud and obnoxious, most likely they're Chinese. No offense to you. <coughs> but people from mainland China know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Excuse me. What else do you need to know about Thailand? Let me see. Exiting. Yeah, when you exit the airport too. They're going to be designated cab if you decide not to take public transportation. And I think you got to press a button to order a cab and they're going to print a receipt to let you know which number you have to walk to. You're going to walk to that number and there's going to be a cab be waiting for you. It's like designated cab. You go to the city center. I think they charge like 500 baht, which is like $13. The tuk-tuks charge a little bit less, 300 baht. And of course, the public transportation charge you know, 30 baht, 20 baht, 50 baht, whatever. What else do you need to know? When you exit that airport, the heat is going to engulf you. I mean, it's going to be a heat like you never felt before. <laughs> Trust me on that. Uh, you know, I was talking about the rainy season. The rainy season is the low season. I know the low season starts in August, I think. No, 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 no. I think the low season ends in August, if I'm not mistaken. I went in August and May. And I know when I went in May, the sweltering heat, I wouldn't stop sweating, man. I mean, I lost weight like a mug. For real. What else do you need to know? What else do you need to know? The money situation, the bus situation. The calves are always going to bonk at you. When you walk down the street, I mean, these cabbies, they will literally approach you. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay. Do you need a ride anywhere? No, nah, I don't need a ride nowhere. If they got a bunch of cabbies waiting outside the hotel or the hostel, <laughs> they will approach, especially in Bangkok. In Chiang Mai, eh, not so much. I talked about the apartment situation in my black and um in my ghetto dude in Thailand video. I talked about it already. You know, forty dollars, eighty dollars, penthouse. You want a nice condo? <laughs> $200 a month. Nice high-rise condo with everything you need. Yeah, the prices out there are amazing. The prices alone make me want to go back. It make me want to go back. Thailand is like the only place where I didn't want to leave. Everywhere else was like, eh. But Thailand is the only place where I did not want to leave. For real. I can see why people overstay their visas. And why the government has implemented these visa rules where you need to have at least 20,000 baht on you if you want to enter the country again. It's very hard to leave Thailand. It's just one of those places. And it's for everybody. Uh, Thailand is the type of place where I would bring anybody to. All other places I've been, I would not just bring anybody to. But Thailand, I, I definitely would. Anybody to. But Thailand, I, I definitely would. I definitely would. What else do you need to know? Um, clothes, clothes are relatively cheap. You'll find clothes everywhere, but they got these um street markets, markets that just pop up out of nowhere, and you gotta navigate through it. And there'd be people. On, I mean, it's like standing in the club, man. It's like standing in on the Lower East Side in New York. I mean, people on top of people everywhere, man. Straight up. Um, you have Seven Eleven grocery stores everywhere as well. 7-Eleven stay open 24 hours, so if you need to use some nice seaweed, seaweed snacks, ice cream, soap, healthy just snacks, go straight to 7-Eleven and they accept Visa. Accept your Visa cards. 
ATMs, you got to pay at least $7 just to withdraw money from the ATM. Crazy prices. Each time you go to the ATM, you got to pay 7 I think. Is it 7 Yep, it's 7 It was, um, 250 by. Yep. <coughs> it's ridiculous, man. For real. You better bring cash with you and get it exchanged at the airport. There's several exchange places at the airport. And the money exchange is right before you get on the subway. So then you can exchange the dollars. They'll give you the correct amount and everything is straight. You don't have to change on the street. I suggest you bring cash there. Very important that you bring cash because those ATM fees are going to eat it up. Unless you got Citibank, you go straight to Citibank to withdraw your money or something like that. I talked about this in another video. Your name got to be exactly um, on your passport when you decide to withdraw money from Western Union. You need to get money from Western Union at the bank. You got your first name, middle name, and last name on that passport. Tell the person sending it that your first name, middle name, and last name better be exactly the same way. Whereas the Bank of Bangkok won't accept it. You got to go to the Western Union place to get your money then, which opens a little bit later. Yep. The malls out there are pretty cool. You want to get some high-quality clothing. You're going to be spending hundreds of dollars for cheap name brand stuff. Expect to spend hundreds of dollars for some Adidas. <laughs> you might get them for $60 here. Less than that, right? Nope. Thailand, you're going to be spending over 100 That's just what it is. And some of the malls out there. <laughs> yes. You know, people might disagree with me, but I believe, you know, you got to remember I'm from Chicago. So I believe it's safe to walk around Thailand, unlike here. Now, if you live in a small town where safety is not an issue you might be like oh man bangkok or thailand it's not safe and i guess it's not safe depending on who you are and how you look at it you feel me i mean there are a lot of hazards and things can go down without any support system on your part so yeah it can happen but to me it's safe very very safe i don't have to look behind my back when i'm using the atm at three o'clock in the morning when you got People sitting in chairs next to the ATM relaxing. You got street dogs just laying down doing their thing. You withdraw money and nobody is looking twice at you. A lot of money is flowing through Thailand. So I don't know if people feel the need to steal or not to steal there or whatever. I know that there's a political unrest situations that happen that can really put a dent on the relationships there as far as violence goes. But other than that, I didn't see no political demonstrations at all. What else about Thailand? I'm trying to cover everything. Hotels, food, water. Yeah, you need to drink bottled water. Yeah. I think that's it. A 45-minute video. Podcast about Thailand and being black in Thailand. So, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.